This video provides another example of a program that involves a series of function calls and we're going to practice tracing through those function calls keeping track of what happens to the variables. One important thing to remember is that there are global variables that belong to the global scope, so ones that we assign to in the global part of your program, the part that is not inside any function. So we're going to have one table to keep track of those variables, the variables that belong to the global scope. And then there are other variables that are local to your functions. So in this case we have one function, foo. Its parameters, its inputs are local to it. And then um, if we had other variables here besides the parameters that were being assigned to, they would also be local to foo. But in this case, the only things that we're assigning to are the inputs themselves. So we have a, vi uh, a separate table up here for those variables, the local variables that belong to foo. Um, and you always want to have a separate table for each function. So if we had more than one function, we would have a table for each of them. You can even, if you want, have a separate table for each function call. That's especially useful if you're doing something that's recursive. Uh, but you could do that here as well. Because foo is getting called three times, you could have three separate tables, one for each call. But we're going to use just a single call for all of, sorry, a single table for all of the calls to the function foo. And then finally down here, we're going to keep track of the output of the program, the values that actually get printed. Okay, so let's step through this one statement at a time. So if we run this code, the first thing that happens is we define the function foo. That doesn't actually do anything besides telling Python what the function looks like. And then we come down to the line that assigns two to x. So you can see here that I'm actually storing that value two in the table for the global scope. Okay, so x has the value 2, then y is assigned the value 0, and then we come down here and you can see that we're making a function call as part of an assignment. So the first thing that has to happen is we have to make that function call, and because we're passing in variables, um, the first thing we're going to do is evaluate those variables. So y evaluates to its current value, which is 0, and x evaluates to its current value, which is 2. And it's those values that are going to get passed in, and they get passed in in the order in which they are specified. And so it's really important to notice here that in foo, the parameter x is getting assigned 0, and the parameter y is getting assigned 2. So notice what mattered here was the order of the inputs, not their names. So it didn't matter that they were called x and y. That had nothing to do with how the values get passed in. What matters is the order in which the inputs are specified. So y is specified first down here. Its value is 0. And so that value gets assigned to the first input of foo, which is x. And then x is specified second here in the call. Its value is 2 and so we assign 2 to the input y. Okay, so that's why it's really important to have these separate tables and to not get confused because we really have two different sets of variables. We have x and y in the global scope, we have x and y that belong to foo. Okay, so then once those values are passed in, we then jump to the function foo and we start executing its code. So y in foo is assigned y plus 1, which is 3, because we take the 2 and we add 1 to it. Then x is assigned x plus y, so that gives us 3 plus, sorry, um, 0 plus 3, which is 3. Right? So we're using the current value of x plus the current value of y. That gives us 3, and then we store that to get the new value of x. Okay, so then when we go to print on this next line of foo, we're printing the values of x and y that belong to foo. 
and so the output we get is 3 space 3 and then we come to the return statement and we're returning the value of x which is 3 that 3 gets sent back and it replaces the function call so you can think of this function call foo y x getting replaced by the value 3 and then we pick up where we left off and that 3 gets assigned to y and notice where we are we're back in the global scope so that 3 is going to show up over here in the table for the global scope so y at a global level is now 3 x however has not been changed because we didn't assign something new to it so in the global scope x is still 2 so when we come down to this next line in the program which is another um, print statement we're going to print the global x followed by a space followed by the global y so we get 2 space 3 next line is another function call we're again calling foo but this time we're passing in x for both the first input and the second input. So we evaluate those inputs. We get 2 for both of them. We pass them in, which assigns them to the parameters of foo. And so you'll notice up here in foo's table, x is now 2, as is y. We then jump to foo. We add 1 to the value of y. We add x and y together to get 5, and that gets stored back into x. So when we print x, y here, we get 5 space 3. Again, we're drawing from the values that belong to foo, because that's where this line of code is. And then we return the current value of x, which is 5. That 5 gets sent back. It replaces the function call. So we are replacing the function call with a 5, but in this case we're throwing that value away. We're not doing anything with it. We're not assigning it. We're not printing it. And so it's as, it's as if that 5 is just thrown away. And so when we come down here and we print, we're going to still get the values that were there before we made the call foo xx. Neither x nor y in the global scope have been changed. And so we end up printing 2 space 3 once again. Okay, so that's the fourth line of the output, 2 space 3. We then come down to the next line in the program. And you can see here we're making a function call to foo from within a print statement. So we're going to make that function call first. Here again we evaluate the inputs. So x evaluates to 2, y evaluates to 3 those values get passed into foo and so I'm going to put them into the table for foo and in this case we are passing them in in the same order so x in the global scope gets assigned to x for foo and y in the global scope gets assigned to y up here so the values end up being the same as they currently are in the global scope okay then we jump to foo we increase y by one and add it, uh, assign it back to y. We add x and y together to get 6 and assign that back to x. And so when we print x and y we're going to get 6 space 4. And then we return x which is now 6. And watch what happens in this case. The 6 gets sent back. It replaces the function call just like every function call. The return value replaces that function call. And then we pick up with whatever is left on that line, which in this case is a print. And so we're going to end up printing that return value, which means we're going to see a line of output with just the number 6 on it. And then finally, we have one more print statement that prints the current value of x, the current value of y, and we're in the global scope, so we're getting the 2 and the 3 one more time. And that's the end of the program.